Did you know that 100 million of the roughly 160 million US households have pets? That's a pretty high number, but what's not a high number is that only 2% of dog owners and 0.5% of cat owners have pet insurance. Recently, we adopted a pet. His name is Leo. He's half Border Collie, half Golden Retriever. So I have been doing a lot of research about pet insurance, and I wanted to share everything in this video that I learned, and right away, I do want to recommend pet insurance. Not only that, by the end of this video, I'm going to let you know which pet insurance company we selected and why, as well as give you eight other pet insurance recommendations that I found through research. I'm also gonna break down a lot of the terms associated with pet insurance and how to save money when you're looking so that you can get the best rate for what you need. And the goal here ultimately is to help save you money in the long run. And as you know, pets can be extremely expensive. In fact, the American Kennel Club did a study and found out that pets cost anywhere from $23,000 to $40,000 in the lifetime of that pet that's a lot of money. And of course there are required costs like the cost of the pet itself, the pet food, pet toys, vet visits and shots, leash, collar, all that good stuff. Then there's optional costs as well. Things like mm, more toys, the crazy cat hotel climby thing, clothes, more clothes, and then the big optional cost, pet insurance, which obviously most people decline. Now depending on your pet's ailment when you bring your pet to the vet, Studies show that costs are gonna range anywhere from 100 to up to $1,000 per visit. So how do you protect your furry little friend without breaking the bank? That's what this video is all about. Because as I found in research, there really is a lot to unpack when it comes to pet insurance. It is all over the board in terms of cost and what it covers and what it doesn't cover. But before we go on, what's up guys? My name is Frankie. This is The Money Resolution. If you enjoy this video, I do put out videos weekly on apparently all things personal finance. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to this video, if you enjoy it by the end. I even put a little subscribe button here in the corner so you can subscribe right now if you'd like. First of all, I've never had pet insurance and this is one of the bigger regrets looking back that I have. With my first cat that I had, I had a $3,000 surgery emergency I had to pay for out of pocket. And with my dog, I had the same type of situation where it ended up costing about $7,000 out of pocket. And I was originally quoted 10 to $15,000. So obviously I am sold on getting pet insurance for Leo and this is why we started researching, but I had a lot of questions like, is it better to get insurance for him now when he's young? Is that gonna save me the most money over time? And also, what are the best ways to save money? What should I be looking for exactly when it comes to pet insurance? Let's dive into that and let's talk first about how pet insurance works and what it costs. Now, one major way that pet insurance is different from regular human health insurance is that with pet insurance, in most cases, almost all cases, you are gonna be responsible for covering the charges out of pocket. Then you submit your claims and you're gonna get reimbursed after the fact. And don't expect to get that money right away. Generally speaking, what I've seen out there doing research is it's gonna take anywhere from roughly seven days to up to two months. Also speaking of timing, you cannot just sign up and start using that insurance same day. Generally, there is sort of a waiting period of two to three weeks, and that's of course to prevent people from signing up just because they notice that their dog might be sick or ill or injured or cat. Now, when it comes to submitting that claim, you are in almost all cases not gonna get 100% of the cost back to you. You're gonna get on average anywhere from 70 to 80 to 90% back. And that's because you're gonna be responsible for what's called a copay. More on that in a moment. Going back to my earlier question, yes, the younger your pet is, generally speaking, the cheaper your pet insurance is going to be. There are several things that come into play when determining the rate you're gonna receive on your insurance. So what type of dog, where you live, how old the dog is, any pre-existing conditions, and those are the big ones. According to the North American Pet Health Insurance Association, who knew there was such a thing, the average monthly price is gonna be $47 a month for dogs, that's your premium, or roughly $30 a month for cats. And the best way to get started in terms of just determining costs and getting comparisons is to start applying for free quotes online. In most cases, all you gotta do is hand over your email address to get that free quote. And in terms of how much it covers, I already mentioned that it's not gonna be 100% of the cost, but the main reason I recommend you have health insurance is so that you never have to make a life and death decision when it comes to your dog or cat 
with money being a strong factor on the line. The choice is gonna be made for you because you're covered. So run the numbers all you want in terms of if you need it or not until something major and serious happens, that is when you need it the most. So. When is the best time to sign up for pet insurance? Well, that's when your pet is 100% healthy, not when something happens to your pet. In fact, in a lot of cases, you could be denied altogether if you do have a serious pre-existing condition, not you your pet. So think of something like a broken bone or again, something that's life threatening. But a lot of times if your pet does have something that's pre-existing, health insurance will cover everything else, but not help out when it comes to that pre-existing condition. Again, though, the best time to get health insurance for your pet is before you need it. I realize that I've already thrown out several terms related to pet insurance, and I wanna make sure that I take a moment to sort of define what those are because they're gonna keep coming up over and over again. And the first one is premiums. So this is how much you're gonna pay out of pocket monthly. And generally, the more comprehensive your insurance is, the more you're gonna pay in premiums monthly. So the more that is covered, the more you're gonna pay. Second is deductible. So this is the amount of money you're gonna to have to pay out of pocket before any amount of insurance kicks in. This is a lot like human health insurance. And generally speaking, the higher the deductible, the lower the premium and vice versa. Most deductibles start around $100, but anywhere in the $200 to $500 range is common. $250 is about average, so annually you're gonna need to cover the first $250 before any insurance kicks in. Next up is copay. So this is the percentage that you're gonna have to cover that insurance is not going to reimburse. Each time you're making a claim, in almost all cases, you're still gonna have to cover a tiny percent of that issue. If you're keeping track, that means you're gonna owe the premium monthly, you're gonna owe a deductible annually, then once you meet the deductible, you're also going to owe a percentage of the cost, which is called your copay. The next term I wanna make sure you're familiar with is what's called caps and limits. This is the amount of money that an insurance company is willing to cover in any given year, or sometimes the length of the entire policy. Some have no caps and no limits, meaning that there is no limit on the amount of money that they're willing to reimburse over the length of that policy, but a lot of them do have a cap. So definitely keep an eye out for how much they're willing to pay out either on an annual basis or even the lifetime of the policy. And then finally, it's exclusions. This is something you're gonna wanna look for. This is usually a list that's provided of things that are not gonna be covered in any case by that insurance company. Exclusions can vary widely. Obviously, we've already covered that pre-existing conditions are almost never gonna be covered. Outside of that though, look for a list of what else is not gonna be covered in your policy. Okay, let's talk insurance coverage types. For the most part, there are two. There's gonna be comprehensive and accident. Wellness and routine is the third one, but that one's actually not very common. These are your typical vet visits, things like your shots, your neutering, and your spaying. Here's where I'm gonna start talking about specific pet insurance companies, but before we get there, I'm gonna give you a couple of pieces of advice in terms of finding the right policy and company for you. The first piece of advice is simply to ask your vet what they recommend. There are lots of options out there. It's a lot like picking a cell phone carrier company. That's a quick plug for a cell phone video I shot recently. You can check out the link above for that one. But again, there are lots of companies, lots of plans, and lots of choices to pick from. Ask your vet what they recommend based on their experience, what a lot of other people are using, and what they might think is best based on your pet. But my actual best piece of advice is to do your own research. And hopefully this video is a part of that, so good job. But really when you're doing your research, the main thing you wanna be thinking about is balancing coverage versus cost. So you need to be thinking about any problems your pet has had in the past, or any potential problems that your pet is prone to due to its breed or age. This is just gonna come down to personal preference and a little bit of research and knowing about your dog, the age, the breed, the history, and trying to project out any health issues that might happen in the future. Obviously, there's a lot of unknowns there. Okay, I've done a lot of research on the topic, so you're probably ready for some recommendations. There is no just best one size fits all plan that I can recommend, but there are several that showed up again and again on sort of top five, top 10 lists as I was researching around for myself. In alphabetical order, the ones that kept coming up the most is highly recommended. This is as of early 2020 are Embrace, Figo, Healthy Paws, Nationwide, Pet Assure, Pet First, Pet Plan, Pets Best, and True Panion. 
These are the ones that I've seen over and over again. And on screen here, I'm gonna give you a little bit more information, some screen grabs in case you wanna pause it and read a little bit more about some of these. I pulled these all from sites that I definitely trust and recommend. Regardless of which one you go with, what you also probably wanna know is how can I save on my insurance policy? So in this next section of the video, I'm gonna give you five ways that you can save potentially on your pet insurance plan. The first tip I'm gonna give you is to take on more risk. So if you wanna keep your premium, your monthly payment to a minimum, you're gonna to need to take on more risk when it comes to your deductible and your co-pays. There are some companies out there like Trupanion where you can literally use a slider and you'll see how these sort of offset with one another and you can be very specific for your deductible and your copay and see how that impacts your premium. So you pay less right now monthly, but you take on more risk if something happens in the future. Next is to work for the right employer. So this is one of the fastest growing benefits for employers to offer, which is pet insurance. There are over 150 major companies that I found in my research that are offering this. Check with your company, maybe they are offering this and you were unaware, or maybe give HR a little bit of a nudge that this is something you'd really like to have. I found companies like Delta Airlines, T-Mobile, UPS, Microsoft, Chipotle, and a lot more are offering this currently. Third is to check for discounts. So the most common discount you're gonna find looking around is policies that cover multiple pets. But what if you don't have multiple pets? If you are a member of a group like AAA or AARP, sometimes you're gonna find there's discounts for you. Military, active duty, and students are other common discounts that I've seen out there. We were actually able to score 10% off our policy. It was 5% off just for signing up for the policy online and another 5% off using the plugin Honey. It's a Chrome extension that helps you find promo codes at checkout. Once again, a quick plug for a video I did about Honey and how you can save money on Amazon and elsewhere. Next, number four is to get pet insurance when your pet is young. So I mentioned that the policies are gonna be cheaper for young pets, and a lot of times it is gonna reassess annually and go up from there, but I've actually seen that there's some policies that allow you to lock in that premium, and that premium's never gonna go up over time. So it's rare to find those, but if you find it, you might wanna jump on that, especially if you have a puppy or a kitten. Some plans actually won't insure your pet once that pet is past a certain age, so that's something to keep in mind. And again, the last thing you wanna do is wait until some sort of illness or chronic condition shows up, then go hunting for health insurance. You're not going to get the best quotes and oftentimes it's going to be hard to find coverage at that point. And then finally, and this is the big one, know what you need. So this is really going to take some thought and some reflection and thinking about your dog, your pet's history, your age. We've already covered this, but as you do your research, you're going to see a lot of things that are included and a lot of things that are excluded. Start taking mental note of what those things are and which are the ones that you'd want the most. Before I get to the one that we did pick, there were two that came in just short and we were very close to picking and that was Healthy Paws and True Panion. A couple friend of ours also just got a puppy recently and after some research, they ended up going with Nationwide and I think that's actually one of the biggest out there. So there's a few you might wanna be thinking about, but the one that we ended up going with was pet plan. Here was my list of the things I was definitely looking for. First, I wanted to make sure that we could file claims online or via an app. Second, I wanted to make sure that there was no limit on the amount of claims that we could make. Third, since our pet is very young and very healthy, I wanted to make sure that we could keep our premiums very low, so under $50 was essential. Fourth, I wanted illness and accident covered, but wellness was sort of optional and I knew that that wasn't likely. Next was that I didn't want any sort of cap or at the very least a very high annual cap. I also wanted the deductible to be annual, not per incident. And finally, very important to me was that cancer and scans would be included in this policy. So our deductible is going to be $300 annually. Our cost, our premium monthly is just $37. So it checks that box of keeping that low. But again, this was after we were able to earn 10% off. Our annual reimbursement cap is $15,000. So that felt definitely high enough for us. And then it covers accidents, injuries, illness, surgery and rehab, cancer treatment, and all scans as well. Everything that we we're looking for. It even covered emergency dental, like broken teeth, lost and found at advertising and rewards, vacation reimbursement, which, okay, cool. And we get reimbursed within 30 days, but generally I've seen from other people online, they were reimbursed within a week. Okay, so there you have it. This video was extremely dense. So number one, it might be super useful to go back and rewatch this, but at the very least, I hope that I armed you with the information you need for picking a pet policy and keeping your costs down. Hopefully I gave you a bunch of good starting points when it comes to picking a policy overall. 
And number three, ultimately, I hope I convinced you that you do indeed need health insurance for your pet or pets. Again, this is up to you which one you're gonna pick based on your needs and situations and personal preferences. But one thing to do is to ask the vet and the other thing to do, of course, is to do your own research. Down below in the description, I'm gonna leave links to all nine, I believe, companies that I recommended in this video, along with a few articles that I used in terms of research for myself and for this video. Like this video if you got some value out of it. It does mean a lot to me. If you want more from me and The Money Resolution, be sure to subscribe. I do put out videos weekly. Drop a comment down below if you do have any thoughts or questions. I do try to reply to every single comment. And the last thing is to share this with a friend if you know somebody else that could use this information, especially those of us that just adopted a pet recently. And kudos to you if that's you and you adopted a pet. I saw a video the other day of a shelter and they were celebrating because every single one of the pets had been adopted. So it's really cool to see adoption rate go up. Thanks as always for watching especially this far. Once again, my name is Frankie. This is The Money Resolution, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, but don't go anywhere just yet. Here is a quick little video montage of our puppy Leo in case you just want some puppy footage to make your day. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs>